Good evening. Thank you for joining me. My name is IOT. This is Eagle Strike, the home of Nigerian footballers. And I have a special guest today with me is Super Sam Soje. Please introduce yourself to us. Yeah, my name is Sam Soje, ex um, Nigerian international, ex Premier League player, ex footballer. Yeah, so Sam, it's a pleasure to have you on Ego Striker. Um, this is the first episode of our Untold Story series. So thank you for being our very first guest and coming here to share wow. some of your stories with us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so today I just want to chat with you a little bit, get to know um, about your background, about your career and about your journey even after football. But we're trying to look at it from a perspective that um, people don't necessarily get to see, you know, the fans don't get to see the whole life of a footballer. Uh, we only watch the 90 minutes that we see on TV and whatever little bits we get off the field. So we want to try to get a little bit of that behind the scenes from you. Um, my first question is going to be about growing up. Um, for anybody that's familiar with you, we know that you grew up in a very, you know, athletic football family. Um, and my question with regards to that is, what was the sibling rivalry or competition like, you know, growing up? Was there always that thing between yourself and your brothers, you know, of I'm the best? And uh, No, um, I think as a family, as a family, when you grew up in a big house, I, I think my dad had a big house, uh, about 13 bedroom house. Oh, really wow. big, yeah, in back in Nigeria, back in Worry. Even though we're all born in London, we, we all went back to Nigeria, so we all lived in this house so when you get apart from football apart from sport when you have a lot of people living in one house there's always competition but uh, when, it, when it comes to football i don't think we had any rivals because um mm. we, we, we were kind of different uh, sets so my, my older brother who started playing rugby uh, was older than us then if he picked up playing football and if he did really well uh, really i didn't really have a rival with if I, I just wanted to be like him and mm. I was lucky enough to be able to get to that level. I, I think later, the more we get older, that's when we knew, uh, okay, I, I, I want to beat you. But normally, it's not even beating you. It's just to be the best in whatever you do. Yeah. Men, people that know soldier will tell you, our mental, uh, our mental is very strong, very strong. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, I guess just continuing in that line, you know, what's the pressure on you? Because you have elder brothers. That yeah. have started to make it and have you know started to pave a path for themselves. Do you feel that pressure coming behind them that if my brothers have made it, then I must make it too? If my brothers can get there, then I must get there too. And no, also, I, sorry, no, I think other than pressure from yourself, also pressure from the outside, you know, from other people. No, I think I was lucky. I think I'm second I'm, I'm second in line, apart from my brother that played rugby. Yeah. If it than me, really, I was second in line. So it was just if I was trying to um you know just try and be as good but to be fair i i, I always tell people i was so arrogant good arrogant when i was younger yeah. I, I i thought i was the best player anyway you know so it, it wasn't like a uh, pressure and um, if you tell me i couldn't do it i would do it times 10. so mm. it was it wasn't a pressure and when you grow up in worry there's nothing called pressure you know when you when you live your life in worry grow up in worry and you know how tough it is you have to be tough so no uh, pressure wasn't there at all i i was in a good way in the, i got in a very good way I, I thought my ability would always see me true and you know god did it for me i, I went anyway and i mean i'll just say personally i like arrogance i would say confidence players you know i like players that go there even if you might not be the best player on the field you know you just go there believing trusting in yourself and knowing that you can you can do a job you yeah know. yeah that's and when when trick. doctors ask me now what i mean by that if you want to be arrogant that's pressure on yourself because you cannot be arrogant and turn up on a saturday and not play well so yeah. when you're arrogant and, and, and you talk a lot like me <laughs> when you're always talking make sure you make sure you oh, do you exactly. so much day yeah. make sure you do so much day so when i do my whole big time big time i go into the gym i, I push more weight i run quicker i drink i train more so i know i can back it up when it comes to the day of the game yeah amazing and um you know another thing that i want to ask about is choosing a position to play in football so this is something that for those of us that watch on tv we'll just see the guy oh um victor Osime striker oh yeah. sakotuko is a winger but yeah. when you speak to footballers a lot of the time you realize that they didn't start off in those positions you True. know they bounced around maybe one coach said oh i like your qualities so how did you 
get to choose your position to play in professional football it's weird it's weird because if he was a defender and i i, I thought from day one I, I was always going to be a defender but when you grew up in a, a, a when you grew up in worry in a youth system it wasn't about being a defender it was about being skillful so 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 you had whether you're a defender whether you're a striker whether you have yeah. to in, in a manner you have to have the, the swag you have to have those, <laughs> those stuff yeah. uh, so that was what i think when i got to the stage of playing in the premier league or playing uh, in england i think i mashed both together and uh, immediately became become who i who i became like very good player on the ball skillful wow. so growing up from beginning to answer your question i always wanted to be a defender and you see the way i play afterwards Honestly, I wanted to defend. I wanted to defend, not just because I am a defender. I, I would put my neck on the line and just defend. But yeah, growing up in what we really, uh, you know, changed my game because I had to be skillful. I had to be uh, like Winston Roma, uh, yeah. even though I played it back. Mm. And you know, just what you said is going to lead me to my next question about you like to defend. I didn't never got to play football at any real level, but I mean, recreationally, I play centre back. And I'm the kind of centre back that I like to defend. You know, I love when I slide tackle somebody. The person is on the floor. I know I got the ball, but you're a little, just a little bit hurt. That just <laughs> like, that makes me feel happy. I know that next I time you you, 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 you be careful when coming towards me. So when I watch and I see footballers, professional footballers that get paid a lot of money yeah. and are still playing with that same rigor and you know that same desire, yeah. it makes me feel so so good. So I'll just ask you. Do you, do you think it's just, you know, it was just something because of your upbringing and, you know, playing football in worry, that's what made you like that? Or was there something else that made you really hard most? No, I, I think I'm, I'm a different breed. I just think I was a different breed. You know, oh. When I was in worry, I was that in worry with the hard boys. I was with the, the hard boys, you were the hardest. You know I mean? So, <laughs> so I, I don't think it's worry. I think it's just me, my, my mental and, and the way I see things, the way I see things. And, and to be honest with you, because as a centre back, I'm not seven foot tall. I, I was like six, six foot, six uh, one. So when a striker sees you, they think they can bully you, and and then you 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 make sure they know that you're playing against against a player. And I always love it when you play a game and you go out afterwards and they talk about it and they remember you. And I love it. I love it. So I I always want to uh, win. Winning was I was obsessed. I had to win. Mm. And let me ask you, you know, um, before settling, you know, as a defender, was there ever a time where maybe a coach wanted you to play as a forward or wanted you to play other, you know, where, what other positions did you try your hand at? I tried everywhere, uh, even professionally. When I was playing for Brentford, I was playing for Reading, or when I was playing for Margate, um, because I, I was very good in the air. When when we were losing in one nil, they, they, they put me off front. Yeah. I, I, thought I was very good on the ball. Even play at the back. I play. I think I played a couple of games for Brentford in, in midfield. So um, my main position was to play at the back. But because of the way I played, I could play at strikers. I can play at the, uh, in the midfield. I think I played a couple of games for Lord County, playing play up front, and I scored a couple of goals. So right. yeah, it was very good. Mm. Another thing that I'll touch on, you know, your hairstyles. Um, yesterday, I was also I was just on Getty Images, just searching some Soji, looking for different pictures and you know we see all sorts of hairstyles that you have from the twist to the dreads to the different colors you know things like that can you tell us was that just you know young boy just having fun with it or was there anything else behind you just answered the question you just answered the question i was just young i was just having fun we had too much time in our hands you know so mm. so all we do we're just thinking about i don't do this crazy thing today and sometimes i, I comb my hair I don't like it, I, I would do some head. So I was just a young guy. Honestly, it wasn't about the money, it was more about I was just having fun. And especially when you're good in what you do, you, you just want to be different, you just want to uh, go, go on the pitch and, and just enjoy yourself. I really enjoyed myself with the hairstyles and everything. And, and you know, I, I, I love to say it, you know, I mean, expressive, you know, just characters. Those are the kind of things that we love to see. I always tell footballers, you know, the fans want to see more than just the 90 minutes on the field. We want to see a little bit of your character, you know, the things that we might not know because we are not, we're not your friends. You true, know, true. Like that. True. So that just gives us a little bit, at least we can, someone can say, ah, okay, Sam Suji looks like a playful guy, you know, looks like a guy that has life, even though we don't get to know just you. Fun. Just fun. Just fun. Yeah. 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 So that's good to hear. Um, okay, so let's just fast forward, you know, we still want to talk about 
um, the things that people might not necessarily have known or have heard over the time. So um, getting to represent Nigeria, you know, is something that everyone dreams of, but not everyone gets the opportunity to do. And you were lucky enough to, you know, represent the national team. Can you just take us through maybe one or two years, even before your first call up? Did you feel any kind of pressure of, or did you set a goal of you want to get into the national team? And, you know, how was it to the point where you finally got that call up? Like I said before, I grew up in Nigeria, so I, I didn't grow up with the English players. I grew up with the Nigerian legends. So yeah. uh, I look forward to playing for Nigeria from day one. Even when I had the chance to represent this country, uh, th there was no asking questions. I was going to play for Nigeria. But I was different. I was so different because um, I would say I, I was a super ego since I was very young because I was staying in the camp, wearing, wearing the kids, staying in the same hotel, uh, going, going on the bus, going, mm. going to games on the bus. When I was young, with, with Efe, with Odisa, yeah. with uh, Omokachi, so they took me in for a very young age. So I, 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 I was a super Eagles player before I even became Super Eagles. Eagles yeah. you know what I mean, so even I, I was so happy. The main thing I was happy about is that um, you're calling me now, talking about me. It, it wasn't about Efe um, doing something for me. I, 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 I worked so hard to 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 get my own identity. But yeah. I would like to you to answer your question is um. I was already a super Eagles player before. Like, <laughs> it was when I got the call, I, I knew exactly how it was. Mm. But yeah, it, it was a, it was a delight when I got the call to play, actually play for my country. Mm. Okay, and um, still with the national team, you know, take us through your first time as a super Eagles player. Yeah, in camp. You yeah. know, what was what was the feeling like? You know, who were the people that obviously you would have maybe known a few people from being there before, but who were the people that really helped you? You know, to to really settle into the main team. Um, to be honest, to, to be to be fair, because I played in London, it was it was good because we had a couple of players playing in London, so I knew them before mm. um, we went to camp. But my, I think the first time I got invited, I was playing for years ago. I was playing for Brentford. And I had a, a, a very good season. I think I got player of the season. And I, I, I got the first call up. Yeah. Uh, he was a coach. So I knew him from his days as well. So I think we went yeah. to Romania. And so I so went to Romania. So, so so you can see exactly where I'm coming from, where it, it was so excited for me, for my football club to come to the dressing room and say, Sam Soldier, you've been invited for to play for your country. That 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 it's just incredible oh, okay so, sorry i'm sorry i'm going to pause you you said your football club came to the dressing room and told you yeah well, that's what happened they, okay so can you, tell, yeah. can you tell us about that you know how did you find out about the club yeah i i was because i i just came from a non-league club market a non-league club so just imagine coming from a non-league club going to a brand for the which was a, a league one league a league one championship at the time um in, in one and a half year and the football club gets an invite from almighty Nigeria for you to come and play for them. So for me, it was really big, but imagine I had to call everyone and say, oh, guess what? Guess who got an invite to play for this country? Sam Soldier. So it was really, it was incredible for me. So I really celebrated it really well. And the club took me to the airport to oh, wow. catch the flight to, to play for my country. So it was really good. It was really good. My first call up was uh, special. Mm. Amazing. And I mean, I, I would obviously never get to play for Nigeria, but I can only imagine what that feeling is like <laughs> to represent your country, man. As really doing what you love doing yeah. is it, definitely something that's undefeated. And I just want to mention your brother, you know, Efe Soji. Yeah. He's one that I was young when he was playing, so I didn't get to watch him too much. Okay. But the games that I watched, man, I, I wasn't going to say it. I was going to save it for the end, but since I'm talking about him now, I would love to speak with him because he was one of the players that I absolutely loved when I was a kid. And see, for his style of play, plus that his Durag, you know, that was something that just stood out. For me as a young boy, I just used to put on my TV. I see this guy in the Durag. He just looked like the coolest guy on, on the, <laughs> the, on the TV, like the coolest footballer ever. So I, I loved him since when I was a kid, you know. And then yourself as well, you were also a player that I liked as well because of your hairstyles and just because of your style of play, you know, those are things that to me was just different from you know the average footballer so it's it's just great to see you know and um you know also hearing your national team stories you know these are things that i can only just 
dream of you know every young boy growing up in worry hopefully watches this video and you know has that same belief that they can do too they too can make it into the national team and represent nigeria okay i want to um ask you about some challenges that you faced you know during your career so you had you know a couple injuries here and there and i've spoken to several footballers i've heard from them and i know that getting injured is probably the number one worst thing that can happen to a football player so let's talk about your very first serious injury how did that come about and how did you deal with it both physically and mentally i i had just one injury and the injury ended my career and but the, the good thing was mm. i got the injury when i was signing for a premier league club mm. but the last game i played for brentford I was, I was going to sign for for Reading. I got the injury. I, I've got cartilage, you know, cartilage in the knee, cartilage. Yeah. So, so when I did the operation, the doctor said to me, um, "I might not play again." And and that, and that was a just just imagine signing a big deal, you know, a million pound deal, uh, going to Reading, uh, playing, you know, playing your, your dream league, yeah. the Premier League. And the doctor said to you, you know, you might not play because of your knee. It's a really serious injury. So it was like try your luck and uh, let's see what happens. Um, fingers crossed, it happened well. But we always knew with time, um, the cat is, is going to you know rub off. I might not be able to play. Then I will have uh, bone to bone, just like yeah. the king. But then I, I make use of it. I, I it, it really opened my eye uh, mm -hmm. to think about life after sports and how how hard I want to work to, uh, to 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 you know to get my my career as a long. Yeah. Uh, career and I really worked hard. I really worked hard. So every day I played, um, at my knee was swell. So for the first four years, uh, when he told me that I couldn't play again, I played on that eight years. So it was a dream come true. So I knew it was a dream come true. But yeah, it was a it was a, it was a hard time. But when you're injured, the work you do in the gym, no one no one is there with you. You know, it's hard when you have yeah. people watching you play. But when you're in the gym by yourself. It all depends on how mentally strong you are, how yeah. tough you are, how um, if, if you say do 20 push-ups or 20 uh, weights, you will do 15 or if you, tell you do 25, 30, you do more because you want to get back fit. So yeah, mentally I was tough. Mm. You know, and I, I want to just ask you about, because um, you said, the doctor said you might never get to play again. And I mean, that, that must be one of the worst things that you can possibly yeah. hear. So in that moment, the, like were you like hey, doctor not lie, not lie. like don't do this kind of like, <laughs> what was what was the immediate reaction like when the doctor says that be honest with you what am i going to do tomorrow but all i knew was football so when he said to me I, the first i came in mind i'm like hold on hold on what am i going to do tomorrow i i i just said you know what I, I'm, I'm from a very good family from a very big family very educated family so i had to call my family i said listen this might be it so, you know, education was the first thing that came to my mind. Like, you know, it's not, it's not time that you have to go and follow your, your education. Yeah. Of school might not be it. But luckily, I played another, another eight years. Amazing. And, you know, we're glad that you got to play those eight years, man, because I can't even imagine. You know, it's, it's one thing to not maybe have the kind of career you envision for yourself, but it's another thing for your career to be cut short oh. due to injury. You know, oh. it is, it's just sad, yeah. you know. Um, another thing that I wanted to ask you about in terms of challenges, um, I was looking at um, your record, you know, for the different clubs that you played, and I saw that you played in quite a, a few, maybe four or five um, playoffs, League One playoffs, Champions League playoffs, and even one time you lost in the playoff final. So that's the one that I want to ask you about. Where's and Brom? Everybody at West Brom, yes. Everybody watches the final, and we see what it's like for the winners you know after the game they lift the trophy on the field they go back into the locker room all the players come on instagram live they start posting videos we see everybody having fun but we never see the losers locker room you know so for someone that has been there can you, what is it like to be on the losing end of a cup final it, mine was worse mine was worse because they were, were far far the better side in the champions league apart from the financial game and um, we were we, we beat derby uh, two weeks before the finals mm, in the league in the league we, I, I think we'll be there 3-0 mm. so that's why i have the experience now when when i get interviews about finals i i always tell people it's on the day it's who turns up on the day so you yeah. might be the best team but on the day if you don't turn up you might lose and it was it, it was 
devastating. I couldn't I couldn't believe. If we had one four nil, four nil, that was that that wasn't even enough. We're looking at <laughs> six nil. Seven, that, that's how that's, that's how, how much better you were. That that was how good we were. Mm. We, were we, we ripped through the league. So when we got to the final and we lost by one goal. Yeah, I, I have to say, I'm a strong boy, I'm a very strong guy, but tears came out because uh, one, you, you miss playing in the Premier League, two, the financial gain, you know, yeah. you had your family there, so it's it's not something I would pray that my enemy should get. It's, it's not a nice feeling. It's not a nice feeling. Uh, I, I want to ask you, you know, after the game, everybody goes back down the tunnel or into the locker room. Who's who's the first person to talk in the in the dressing room? Like, does everybody just come in head down, quiet? Or like what happens? And to be fair, in finals like a, a playoff finals, you come in the dressing room, it's done now. Eh? We don't don't forget we've played football all our lives. So, yeah. so so we've experienced this. So the next thing we do is the manager will say to everyone, listen, we didn't perform today, let's go again next season. That's how tough football is. So yeah. it's about let's go again. So, you can't beat yourself up over it. Yeah. So when we see fans fighting outside, there's no need for that because the players have moved on. He's <laughs> in to come. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's that's interesting to hear. And you know, definitely, I just know. Like, I mean, as a fan, my team has lost finals that I've watched, and I know the pain that I felt. So I cannot imagine what is like. I can only imagine, you know, to be on the field, be a part of the of the team, and losing those. Hurts us more than you guys. It hurts us more than the fans. But yes, we're professionals. We have to go again. We have to move. Yeah, we have to go again. Yeah. Okay, that's 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 interesting one, you know. And I wanted to ask about that because I just thought it was a different dynamic. Everybody's always talking about being on the winning side, but we never get to hear from the other no, side. Okay. No, okay. Um. So um. Let's now move to the end of your of your career. Yeah. So, how did you know that your career was coming to an end? That that's a great question. Great question. No one can tell you to stop. No one. Your, you will tell yourself, this is the day I will stop. No one has, no coach, no um, mentor, nobody can say stop. Your body, you will tell yourself, your body will tell you, this will be my last game, I'm going to stop. So regardless of what happens, whether you, you get into issues or you, when it comes to football or sports, you can only tell yourself, your body will tell you. So I, my body told me I couldn't do it. And the reason I couldn't do it was my injury. Yeah. Every day I play, when I come back, my, my knee is all fluid. So I go in, they use their steroids and, and take away uh, fluid from my knee and put a little bit of steroid in it. So I've been doing that for the last two years. So um, and got to a point where the last two years of my career, I, I would have been a gr even greater player. But because I, I couldn't train every day, I, I only trained once a week and play on a Saturday. Oh, wow. I didn't like that anymore. I didn't like that anymore. So I said, yeah. this is it. If I wanted to go for another two years, I would have. I had clubs that wanted to sign me. But physically, I couldn't do it anymore. Mm. Amazing, you know. And it's, it's good that that you said like you are the one that will decide when it's time to it's time to end. Because we always see fans, you know, fans be ah, may this guy go retired. Why <laughs> 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 right, play no. you don't play alone? You're not tired for him. No. But, the players know that they can still they can still keep it going yes, they can still keep it. my house you get my house no but as a defender it's like the kind of mentality i had yes. when I, I play some games and some striker go past me mm. I, I i'm saying to myself that should be happening to me that's when yeah. i said you know what maybe it's not time i stop mm. that's that's when it, it, i guess it becomes a thing of just your personal professional pride you yeah. know how can I just be doing this I'm you. every time <laughs> I, yeah, I, can't, I can't just keep stressing myself like yeah. this I understand. Okay, so um, my final question about your your football career is controversy. You know, we've spoken about you throughout today, and you know, we've learned about how hard moves and how mentally strong you are. So, how is it when you know this new big story, big news story comes up, and you're in the middle of this, you know, big scandal and everything? How do you deal with it? You know, coming from a professional point of view, you know, being an ex-pro. And also just from a personal point of view, you know, yeah. nobody once likes to be accused of no. doing anything, you know. So how was that like for you? First of all, personally, I could handle it because I knew I, I, I didn't do it. But, mm. but when, when, when you see the infect on your family, the, that, that's what gets you. 
but personally, I, I'm, I'm ugly enough to handle it. You know, uh, it, it wasn't. A, I knew I didn't do it, and and just for the record, it was it was simple. They had two people in the video, but the video went viral. Everyone saw the video, so th there were two people in the video: myself and some other guy. Yeah? So one person in that video was a criminal; the other person was a journalist. So one person went to prison. Someone didn't go to prison. I've never been to prison. So, but one person in that video went to prison. So that answered the question. So let's yeah. put that aside. But to answer your question, it was tough. Not for just me, but I could handle it. No matter what you bring to me, I will handle it because I grew up in a very tough, tough place. But when you see the effects that that you bring to your family, your wife, your daughter going to school, they got cameras in front of the door. It, it, it's really hard. And when you when people talk to you, the first thing they ask you is about that. But now I'm delighted because. I've moved on. I've gone. They made me even more popular. I've gone more. I've, 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 I've achieved so much after that. Mm. We're, we're talking about years ago, 2013. I couldn't even remember anymore. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in a better place, and uh, I'm happy um, that happened. I went to court four times, and I won four times. So yeah. I, I keep smashing them. So I'm just proud, you know. So yeah. it's not something I, I don't like talking about, but it's yeah. something I would tell players about. You have to be careful. You have to be careful what you do. Uh, whatever you you put yourself into, but just make sure you're clean. Once yeah. you're clean, you will never be set up. That's that's my advice to everyone. But I'm proud of what I've achieved after that. Mm, amazing, you know. And it's glad to hear that you know you were able to defend yourself and you were able to beat it. You know. But then my final question, just regards with regards to that, is you've cleared your name, you know, and everybody knows that you didn't do this thing. But you know how the world is. There are always those people that no matter how many times you clear your name. In the back of your mind, they're like, "No, Joe, this guy did that thing." I love so that. How how do you deal with you know? I love that. that. I'm, that I'm judging about. you. I'm judging you now. <laughs> so regardless, you're gonna get judged anyway. Mm. I'm judging you. I would say someone that like, you think your your show is the best show. Mm. So regardless, you you're gonna get judged anyway. But anyway, being serious, I I I got lots of young players now. Yeah. The way I live my life now, honestly, I'm not just joking. Honestly. If it's not positive because of the, the because of football and a manager saying to you, you, you you're not good enough, you, you've been through so many hurdles. If it's not positive, your opinion doesn't really matter to me. I'm, I'm, and I'm really people that know me will tell you, I don't really care what what you think. It's all about what I am. When I die, the day I die, no one's gonna come to the, with me to my grave. Yeah. <laughs> So really, is that my opinion about myself yeah. is what matters. I love when people talk about it. Do you know why? When you're talking about that, what what name are you calling though? Sam Soldier. So um, you're you're making me more popular. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. So we they, we talk about the Queen. We talk about uh, Buhari. We talk about so what you're making me. You're putting me on that level. Mm. So thank you so, for that. So you you say you believe no PR is is bad PR. Please call my name, please. Yeah. My yeah. name is there. Make sure yeah. you know. But hopefully, it's, it's for the right reason. Yeah. But if you choose to, if you choose to talk about that, that you don't believe me. You don't have to believe me. I don't really care for you to believe me. At least you're still. But 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 just for for the viewers out there, um, I'll tell you, I'm a young black kid in London. Yeah. Made a bit of money, went to court. Young black kid. If I did it, I would go to prison. Trust me. That is that is true. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is true. <laughs> you're not getting out. You're not getting out. If you did it, you're yeah. Okay. Um let's let's move on. Um so I want to ask you about your teammates. Yeah. yeah. Um so now we're talking about teammates across the years, you know, club football, national team. You know, who would you say was the person that you just had the best chemistry with? You know, when both of you stepped on the pitch, everything just went. Oh, easy, easy. Um, there's a player called Michael Turner. Mm. Where did you play with him? Brentford. Brentford. We were in Brentford for two to three years. And it, it was just a chemistry. It was chemistry. Mm. Ridiculous. Uh, and and not to respect, because that's a very hard question, because I played for some big, big clubs with some big, big uh, players. Yeah. But Michael Turner was different. It was just, we didn't even need to talk. It was mm. ridiculous. Even to date, I, I think, I'm sure he has never played with anyone like me. And the same thing as with me as well. I've not yes. played anyone like him. I could understand him breathing. Just him breathing. I can understand what he's doing. He mm. was that good. So yeah, I would say the chemistry, when it comes to chemistry, I would say Michael Turner on the pitch. But when it comes to friendship, 
I've got different different players. So you can okay. ask questions. But yeah, on the page, Michael Turner was up there, definitely. Okay. How about the most underappreciated or underrated player that you played with? You know, the person that didn't get the media applauded, you know, maybe didn't have as many fans as you would have imagined. But you watching this guy in training, watching this guy on match day, you're like, oh, he's he's out of this world. You know, who was that guy? Yeah, I've got a couple of them. I've got a couple of them. Um, there, there's a player called Jay, Jay Tab. Uh, I played with at Brentford. Um, and definitely um, she, for you, Fijana. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and to be honest with you, Mikel. I, mm. I don't think... I, and the reason I pick them kind of players is because I play with Shea a few games. You will never know how good Shea is until okay. you play with him. And as a defender, the, the one thing you, do, you hate is ball coming to your to the feet of your strikers. Them boys are so good in screening that. They, so they make my life so easy. So I love them. But people, the fans, they never get attention from the fans because the fans don't know how good they were. So when I was playing with them, they made my life so easy because there's no way you can zip the ball to the strikers where they will not be in the way. So you have to come up and I'm very good in the air. So it made it so easy for me. So Shea, Tab, Mikael as well, you know, but yeah, I is a hard person as well. I've played with so many players as well. Yeah. But you know, definitely I would say, you know, DMs definitely don't get enough praise. I mean, now thankfully Ngolo Kante is starting to get plotted, you know, but before him, we haven't really seen any defensive midfield that gets you know acknowledged for the work that they do which is very important work you know um okay so who would you say is the fastest teammates that you ever had you know this guy on the ball off the ball whatever he could beat anybody in a sprint i i think martin was quick martin was very quick oh, about very much and, uh, and, and i got a player who's called dj campbell dj, DJ campbell played with me at brentford he played at stevens as well very quick, very quick. Um, yeah, I, I think them two boys um, are up there with uh, players that are very, very lightly quick. Mm. And how about um, funniest player? Who was the funniest teammates that you had that always you know, brought life into the dressing room? Oh. Um, or were you the guy that brought life into the dressing room? Good one to you. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I was the, not clown in a bad way. But yeah. I could take jokes. Mm. I could take jokes. So I think every club I've been at, yeah, Sam Soldier is a joke. So they they always joke with me. You know, I, I I could take it. You know, so I, I would say I was up there with um <laughs> I was up there with the funny <laughs> crap. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Um so final question about your teammates is actually going to be for you to choose your best eleven of teammates that you played with. The only catch is that you can't be on the team you're the coach so 11 players it doesn't matter where you played with them as long as it was in professional football club national team doesn't matter who would be on your squad so hard so so hard um i i would say that there's a player called michael uh, i'll say michael turner center defender i have uh Kevin. okay sorry let's 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 take it um position by position so that you know it's easy to follow so go over right back oh, oh, go, oh, go go yeah um, because i had a very good season a very good life a very good football career at brentford um oh where ready brentford where's ah oh, i i'll go with nelson mm, nelson because a good friend nelson at brentford i'll go with nelson okay um he's up there uh, right back, I'll, I'll go with Kevin O'Connell. Um, center half, I will go with Michael Turner and uh, that play with, uh, oh, West Brom was um, Ro Roberts, West Brom. Uh, left back will be. Oh, listen. Uh, <laughs> <Tough>. <laughs> I've, got, I've got I've got too many. Um oh, it's too much of you. Um not counting, I had a leg back up. Framo, Frampton. Frampton. I would okay. go with um, because he's my mate, he might wash it and and if I don't call his name he'll probably kill me. <laughs> I'll go with Dixon Tuhu. Okay. Definitely. Okay. 
And I mean, he was the ball line as well, right? So we have to give him. It, it's one of them ones that, that that people don't know how good he was. He was clean. He was a um, was a neat player. He, he didn't he, he didn't need attention. He just played his game. He was professional mm-hmm. about it. So people don't really know how good he was. But I knew how really good he was. Um, center back, uh, yeah, they know. Then Dixon, they, they, they play at um, Jason Kumas. I will go, yeah, J Tab as well. We have, I think we have, so you've gone goalkeeper, four defenders, and that's yeah. three midfielders. Yeah, that's three midfielders. So yeah. we have three more forwards now. Three more forwards. Kevin um, Phillips. Just, not because he's, I just, it was just hard for me to play against him. Mm. Um, one more, uh, Kamara. Which Kamara? Because, you know. <laughs> Dumasi Kamara that played for Fulham, a Senegalese. Mm. He played for Fulham, he played for Senegal, he played, he played with me for West Brom. Okay. Dumasi uh, Kamara. Um, and one more. One more, um, I, I, you know what? I, I bet you after this show, I'll be like, What? What? You, are, you forgot all these guys. <laughs> um, one, one more, the young lad, John Joe Shelby. John Joe Shelby, mm-hmm. ah, that's that's, a, that's an interesting one. Let me just ask you about that. Why, why Shelby? When was at, at his age, his, his arrogancy playing football at his age, he was only 17. He, if you don't pass the ball at that age. We wanted to kill him in the dressing room. We we'll always say, shut up, shut up. He would tell you straight, pass it to me, pass it to me. And it, it was only 17 and he could paint the ball. He was, mm. his, his attitude towards the game was really good. Uh, and we knew it was going to go all the way. And he went from Charlton to Liverpool. So yeah, I'll, I'll put it in my team. Mm. Amazing, amazing. Okay, so obviously, unfortunately, I, I couldn't take down all the names, but when the video comes up, we'll put the players on the screen. So for those watching, you guys will have a better visual of Sam Soji's best 11. Um, but yeah, and also I want to ask about um, Kevin Phillips. Kevin Phillips, because I know he's a player that I watched as well, and he was a very good striker. So what was it like playing with him, you know? With him or, or against him? Oh, with him. Oh, with, with him, yeah. The first that I, I went to training with him, I knew I went, oh my god, no wonder he's <laughs> he's, he's sneaky. He, he, he's not the quickest, mm. he's not the strongest, but he just falls at the right place at the right time and he just takes his shot. And and from the way I played, I played against him as well. From the way I played, I, I love whether you're quick or you're big, wherever, I could take it. But yeah. he's one, he just looks at your eye and he moves. He, he, he's not that quick. So he's always there to, to pounce on, on any ball. So I didn't like him because he always walked with your head, looks at your eyes, he knows when to position himself. But I was that good when I was playing. I love the big, 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 big strikers. If you're big, I'm fine. If you're nippy and small, I'm fine. So yes. he was the one I struggled to play against. Oh, uh, interesting, interesting. Okay, and finally, um, just to wrap up today's conversation, um, let's just talk quickly about life after football. You know, we've heard a lot about Sam Sujit, the guy, Sam Sujit, the footballer, you know, mentally strong, tough guy from Wari that made it all the way to the Premier League. And even against the odds, after the, you know, doctor said you might have got to play again, still got to play eight more years, you know. Now, all that has, you know, come and has gone. And just like, like any other job, really, that you get in this world, at some point, your contract is over and you need to find next job for yourself. So, what was the transition like for you? You know, going from professional footballer to life after football. Um, just to correct you, football is not like that. Football is never planned. Mm. It's never planned. So, I was lucky enough to have planned mine. I planned mine because I had that that injury, and I was told that I was going to finish playing. So, in a way, in my head, I knew I was going to finish next year. I was going to finish next year. So, I planned. So, I, I, went, I went back to further my education. I did. Um, maintenance of gas not not to do sports gas and uh, uh, installation so i had to go and you know go back to um, for the medication and so i was planning what i was going to do after football four years five years before i finished so when i then finished i went i tried to do some of my coaching badges and then um, i knew I, I didn't want to be a coach i, I, I don't want to be an agent i don't want to be a scout i wanted to uh, change the game from from the boardroom, I want to be involved with the uh, decision making 
team. So that's why I, 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 I'm not doing it because I'm an ex footballer. When I'm in, at work, I, I don't want you to address me as an ex footballer. I want you to respect me because I know exactly what I'm doing when it comes to administrative uh, side of things. I know what it takes to um, run a football club. So I've educated myself to be able to do that. So um, yeah, uh, I've got a couple of business that I'm trying to do as well. So life after football to me, I would say I'm a lucky guy. Um, I've got things going on for me. It's not easy, but it's always tough regardless of you getting things you do. But what saved me, and I tell every player now, the best thing for a footballer is the day you stop, you have to accept that football's finished. You will always be a superstar for the rest of your life, but you cannot live a superstar life. Mm. You have to accept that football's finished, and you do exactly what gets you up in the morning. It's not about the money, it's about what gets you up in the morning. Just before you go, uh, this, this is for uh, every footballer out there. We're not asking for, uh, a, you know, handouts. When when you were playing football, you get up in the morning, eight o'clock. You go you go football. You come back two o'clock. You get paid millions of pounds. So after football, you sleep in the morning, till twelve, till, till six o'clock. Why do you expect to, to get, get paid? That's why. <laughs> why do you expect to get paid? You have to find something that gets you up in the morning. So yeah. when you go out, you expect to get paid at the end of the month. So that's my advice to every player. So I'm happy that football, life of sports has done me great. I've had the mentality now that I used to be, I used to keep ball for living. <laughs> now I do other business. So I can talk to you about your show. I can talk to you about other, other subjects. So yeah. that's, that's how I see things. Amazing. And I, I just want to say, I love, like, I don't even have anything to add or to. I love the way you just put it there. You know, I'm sure if there's any current pro that watches this you know and they hear from someone that has been there done that they would you know learn and they will understand you know some things that they, they need to 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 know to be able to progress in their lives you know after their own playing playing days and um finally um what can we look forward to you know i don't know if do you have any plans coming up in the next week next two weeks next month is there anything that you're working on right now that you can just plug and let the people know about no i'm just happy i'm 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 uh, I, i'm in london at the moment but i'm happy that you know i'm a friend not a friend but um um a close friend you know we're really close to the recent governor of data state he, he gave me the opportunity to be able to work as a um, head of technical uh, and you know for the youth in Delta states yeah. um, so i'm really chasing that I, I think i can do a good job you know with next generation um I, I'm, I'm always pushing myself to to, to open business and whatever is out there so if you ask me what's what's there next week there's always stuff for me to do i'm, I'm always talking to people i'm always uh, trying to change the game i'm trying to be you know get to it. one day be a dfa chairman or one day be a commissioner of sport I, I won't lie, that's my ambition, and that's what I'm working towards too. So I'm learning every day from the people I'm, that is there at the moment. So that is my ambition. One day I would be there to change things, and I will be very good. Mm. And I would just say, you know, the fans would like, you know, just to see an ex pro in one of those positions because it's something that people have been clamoring for. And, you know, even better that it's an ex pro that knows what he's doing and not just there because of oh, I played football. I like a bit. I, I like a bit. Just said just now. It, well, I don't want to be addressed as an ex-professional doing it. I, when I'm in the meet or in the office, I want to be addressed as a professional. As a what you're doing, yeah, exactly. You know, and uh, then I have the upper hand because I play the game, but not because I, I'm an ex-player. Um, uh, I should give it a, a, a chance. No, something. Give, yeah. give me a chance because I know what I'm doing. Yeah, exactly. Love it, love it. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Super Sam. So Jay, it's been a pleasure once again chatting with you, man. You know, there's there's just some people that you know you have conversations with about and the question just always goes well. And so far you've been one of those people. So I really appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. So it's, it's a pleasure talking to you. And of course, you know, um from us at Eagles Tracker and you know, I'm sure Nigerian fans as well. We wish you the best in whatever, you know, next step that you have in your life, you know, after football. Um, like you said, you know, your goal is to maybe one day become the FA chairman or commissioner. And we hope that you're able to achieve that goal, you know. It's, it's, it's good to even just hear that, you know, you're still setting these goals for yourself even after football because a lot of people don't think okay. that you still need to have goals to keep yourself moving and to keep yourself driven. So it's, it's great to hear and it's been a wonderful chat. Well, you go, I want to say thank you as well because, you know, sometimes uh, people don't give you guys credit. 
you know, um, it's, it's someone like you is not there. I, I'm not saying I want the attention, but you know, from your appreciation, you you, you come on air, you, you you make people understand what we're doing now. So thank you uh, as well. You know, um, now they know Sam wants to be a chairman, so they might. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. And thank you know, for, for us at English Tracker, all we like really, we're not all, but a lot of what we want to do is we want to just tell footballer stories. You know, the undiluted, straight from the source as it's supposed to be. You know, no juicy headline no anything like that just tell your story the way you want to be told and let the fans just you know carry it on from there and make their own conclusions or whatever the case may be so thank you once again